Oh, so thank you so much for joining me today, Deb. Um, I'm wow. Alice. <laughs> I'm the assistant curator at ArtCore. Um, and I've obviously been working with you um, to develop your online exhibition of Here and Now, um, which you've been working on during your master's at the University of Derby. Um, so I just thought today would be a really good chance for you to tell us more about your work. Um, so I'd love you to yeah, introduce yourself and your practice, um, both from the eyes of yeah, Deb, Debbie, and also Miss Demina. Okay, thank you. Yes, I am um, Deb and I also work, I work under different names, different characters. So I tend to work under um, Deb Rogers when I'm doing, Deb or Deborah Rogers when I'm doing participatory stuff. And so I have another two characters. So Ms. Demina is one of them yeah. and she tends to do more, uh, she was originally my male art name. So the art the name for the person that I would do mail art with so stuff that we mm -hmm. sent in the post in the 80s yeah. but then um, I've kind of kept hold of her and she's become my name for a, for the whole time really well she's been reborn again I suppose with slightly different she was misdemeanor originally and now she's misdemeanor okay. which is kind of like, as of age so she's kind of changed with me sure. and she tends to do um, she tends to work on stuff that is um, thinking about issues and thinking about um, kind of getting to the deeper spot of things, I think. Okay. And then, Debbie, yeah, and Debbie Doodar tends to be much more uh, works with like fabrics and cloths and stitches things together and kind of fabricates little things up. Fabricates and, and it's kind of interesting. I kind of like work with, I'm a twin and I'm not sure if that's linked to this kind of like multi-character stuff, but it just feels good for me to kind of separate them out so that you know I know that when I'm doing this work I'm feeling like this type of a person and when I'm doing that work this is who I am and then when I I'm just out and about I'm some somebody else I quite like playing with that yeah it's really really interesting and I guess I mean I know that you're really interested in things like gender and identity and um you know looking from a kind of feminist lens so of course you know the fact that you've just said you know you've changed your name from misdemeanor to misdemeanor there's obviously some discourse around that in that um so could, could you tell me a little bit more about those and how you explore those in your work oh yeah um i kind of feel that i as a as a as a woman i, I can't avoid coming from a feminist perspective i think especially a woman who grew up in the 70s and 80s mm -hmm. um it was a funny time, but I think it was a very um, supportive time. I think there was almost like this way for women in the 80s to kind of like be let loose, but without realising, but without understanding totally, for me anyway, without understanding the oppression mm -hmm. um, that we were experiencing. When I grew up with, I grew up with a twin brother, so I kind of, um, I recognised very early on that I had that was inequalities for male and female. Like we were both brought up at exactly the same time, doing exactly the same things, but there were things that were not quite. Why is that an expectation of of him as a boy, and why is there an expectation of this as me as a female? So, it was quite interesting. So that I've always kind of carried that with me. This kind of like questioning of why 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 is that okay and why is that happening and who says that that's correct and what what you know so. Um, our roles in society and you know why was my brother given the role to look after me at a certain age and 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 for me to be left to feel that I couldn't look after myself sure. you know and then as I got older I suppose looking at um from a female perspective about relationships and how that um impacts on us and our roles in those places and kind of swapping roles mm -hmm. you know giving the power to the woman and making them the bigger person in the painting or the bigger person in the image and mm -hmm. um and then what happens if you start swapping the people and for animals? And so that was when I first kind of went to uni in the 90s. Well, the late 80s and 90s. And now it kind of like is, my work is about transformation at the moment. And it is specifically about female transformation and specifically about menopause, I suppose, with a focus on menopause, but looking at transformation and how we change and how we alter and what sort of things can help us get there, really. That sounds really interesting. Did, did you study art previously to your master's then? Was yes, so I did fine art yeah, originally, yeah. So in 87, I went, to, I came from Wolverhampton to Stoke and uh, studied fine art. And now I'm still here. Yeah. Um, and I've been working as an artist for that whole time as well. So in participatory. Yeah. Mm. 
Yeah, but it's really interesting to see how that has developed and progressed. Um, it's quite oh, enormously, yeah. Yeah, definitely. And like times change and there's different politics and there's different conversations that we're having around feminist discourse. So yeah, it's definitely something that I'm uh, intrigued and interested by in your work. Um, yes, I'm, and I'm happy that it's coming back out again now. I do feel that sometimes it has to because I wasn't my mom didn't um my mom didn't say that you had to be a feminist and she wasn't a feminist but she definitely had feminist views yeah. and it's really just but without knowledge of them and it's really interesting to see now how mm, actually a lot of those you know the strength and the and the power of women is um beautifully I don't know it's flowing gorgeously at the moment really well mm -hmm. and um I feel that we are more empowered when it's not perfect in any manner whatsoever but it's getting there it's definitely the door has been opened and and you know like we're we're less afraid and we're taken more seriously which is great yeah. the fact that we're having this conversation about it you know if you think all those years ago that, that it wasn't discussed it wasn't a something that artists were considering so um yeah it's amazing i guess and another, I, oh sorry go on deb <laughs> I'll throw this in i was i was uh, educated by men all through the art system was men yeah. there was very you women so that and that has changed enormously now which is great yeah would, would would you say that your course was um dominated by more kind of women or non-binary people rather than men or was there quite an equal <laughs> um i would say more female more female students but more male uh in positions of power mm -hmm. okay yeah. Mm. yeah it's still a really, really interesting thing to consider isn't it yeah, yeah thank you no that's okay I, th I think yeah another part of your work that um i'd really picked up on was this idea of ritual um and how yeah how that kind of relates to your performance but also yeah just your thinking how how do you what do you think about ritual and, and why are you interested in it um i can't I, I can't quite put my finger on where it came from but ritual has kind of manifested itself as a really interesting way for me to um to really look at what what we do that can help and what we and what rituals we do rituals is huge in in um in relation to transformation and you know like um from i'm thinking about you know witchcraft making spells drinking tea you know making things the ritual of kind of like getting dressed even you know and those even the kinds of things so very simple rituals but very complex rituals and rituals that come from distant places but, but become a part of our norm as well that's quite interesting to me and rituals that we do that become um habitual and we forget about or become a bit um mm, less less helpful to us yeah and um yeah things like that so it is it's almost been an exploration of what am i doing and what can i do mm -hmm. um on a regular basis that can keep me well and get me through this um this transformation that i'm experiencing really the transformation i was experiencing was very difficult really really hard and it's almost like i had to get lay it out on the table and um and look to what can what is it that we can do what are others doing what's the advice that i'm hearing and we get we get information from lots of different places and and taking that information and then turning them into little rituals and kind of like seeing how i can help myself yeah. and using materials that transform as well that's quite an interesting one for me so using something that starts off as one and then becomes another i suppose thinking about clay and yeah tea and you know again tea you know like it, it it it's from a plant but it becomes this and the transformation of ourselves and the rituals that we do for changing how we look or changing what you know color things are or all sorts yeah. of minor and major rituals yeah it's really interesting i feel like it's something that has really been kind of drilled into us in this last year it's like you must have a routine you must you must keep this like yeah momentum up of, of doing things yeah, yeah so it's, it's really yeah relevant to how we've been living for the past year. it is yeah yeah that well, that's quite interesting because i was working on this before lockdown and then when lockdown hit it was almost um it was almost like oh 
that's interesting. Yeah. It's almost like all of the things that I'd been working with and exploring and, 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 and where it was taking me to was really relevant to, to the experience of lockdown, mm -hmm. you know, and that we're all going to, it's a change, but how do we manage that change and how, what sort of a change is it going to be? And every person is different here. Yeah, so it's very interesting. And I guess, yeah, it's something that I've asked um, everyone who's, who's done the course with you. Like how, how has your experience been during the pandemic working as an artist and just living your, you know, fitting that in with your day to day life as well? It must have been really challenging. I found it very, it was challenging, yeah. especially at first. At first, all my work got cancelled. Okay. And so that was like a real shock. And so my place in the world changed. It's okay. like I didn't have a purpose. What was what was my purpose? It had just been taken from me instantly. Mm -hmm. And after two weeks, I changed. Um, I had to change my routines. And well, I'd already changed my routines because I did, just didn't want to get up because there was no purpose to it. <laughs> I but, <feel> uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But going to you was good because that kept a momentum happening and yeah. a link to um the world and to myself and to my learning and to my subject and to myself Amazing. and then um I started doing some exercise with my friends in the morning with Joe Wicks which was really good so like that started happening we're still doing it now we've just changed it oh, to an hour wow. of so we're still yeah. doing it now we all we're all like women of, of a similar age and we all are really and also and going through this and some of us are single and, and living alone mm -hmm. and so it's very interesting um that's been great to kind of like um have something that is a regular activity yeah that also then became a part of that also transformed my body and my mind so that also then became a part of this this whole process of transforming so everything for me kind of like just get dragged into the whole transformation stuff it was like, um, in some ways, I couldn't ask for more because my work was cancelled, so I couldn't actually go out to work. So I had to focus more on my work, my yeah. MA work, which was a great opportunity. And I do love a challenge, and I was ready for change. Yeah. So the change was perfect for me. So very, very selfishly, I'm like, I couldn't have asked for it to happen at a better time. But I also appreciate how difficult it is for a lot of people, you know, that. But for us at uni, and I don't mind virtual learning. I like going on the train and I like seeing people, but I'm also happy to have an extra hour and a half on each end of my day okay. to do what I need to do or to sit for a bit or prep or read, you know, so... Absolutely, I really agree with that. I think we've we've all been a lot more productive with our time because we haven't had to sit in traffic or yeah, sit on a train. And and you're right, it adds like three hours to your day or something. So yeah. that's such a lot of time. Yeah. Um, that's really good to hear that you you coped well and and you adapted. And I think yeah, that's the point, isn't it? That you've um you've positively responded to that change and and made it. And it does sound like all of that really ties into your work. That idea of ritual and new change and that transformation. Um, so could could you tell me a little bit about the work that you're showing as part of your master's degree show? Oh, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, shall I show you some physical pictures? Yeah. So this is, um, so what I do in my work is um, a, a little bit of perform performative stuff. So I'll um, go through rituals in a performative manner mm -hmm. and document myself with my phone and um and then i'll take those images and photo montage them i i merge myself with my dog's head percy so i've got two dogs and one of them's called percy and um i started at the beginning of my menopause i started merging his head with m with my body mm -hmm. um almost like as a it was almost like in it was almost like my identity during transformation so in order for me to be able to get through it all I needed to kind of like I don't know almost hide or disappear or be go back a little bit and become able to give me time and thought time for thinking and time for processing stuff and for growing and developing and to kind of sit back and kind of see what I'm becoming so um having my dog's head felt much better for me than having a my own human head 
And I was also having some issues about, you know, how everyone has to see what people look like in order for them to make decisions about stuff, which seems, yeah. a little bit, you know, like it's nicer to kind of see what people do rather than what they look like, I suppose. Yeah. But okay. so I take those, so I take those elements and I photo montage um, Percy. And then also during this whole process, me and Percy have started to become more bird as well. And so we're exploring kind of like flight and freedom and liberty and, yeah. um, looking at things from a bird's perspective a little bit more and so um on top of Percy's head so you can still see my hair but his head and then the bird on top of that it's almost like masking Percy and myself and merging yeah. us together and then this is um this piece here is um called flight and fight mm -hmm. or fight and flight as because it's usually fight or flight but this is like um me kind of like I've made this womb type um well womb inspired piece of sculpture that i'm kind of performing with and um it's almost like wings but it's all it, it's also something i'm like dragging around and carrying stuff inside of it that will help me kind of get through to the other side so um yeah this is this and then i well i do the photo montage and then i photocopy it all and then i and then i make a screen print out of it so this is oh, wow. so these are screen prints but then these have been blown up digitally yeah. to um to be like massive things because i really like them to have um uh, presence you know like almost like confrontational when you walk into the room they're they're your size they're your you know the face is the mm -hmm. same size as yours and the body is the same size as that so i do like an element of that in there as well mm -hmm. and it i'm very interested in how work engages with public and how the audience engages with the work so mm -hmm. if you make them bigger you get one type of a, an experience and if you make them very small you would get you know a different experience yeah i guess with them being your size it's so much more relatable for people to experience yeah. that image you know i was just thinking as well it, there's a really nice link with thinking about um those kind of like mating rituals that birds do and those you know thinking about how that ties in with your experiences of ritual as well it's really interesting how you've used the bird as this uh other animal to incorporate into your transformation yeah it felt very important to go to bird actually i'll go to my next slide and see what i've got there um there. okay so um this is a giant one as well life-size print that is um a digital print when these this is kind of this is called um tide and tide time and tide wait for no woman and it is all about the it, it's got moon it's got moon um references and tide references that's the beach and the sea in front and that's through binoculars this picture so i took the you know so i take the different pictures and then kind of merge them all together so there's three different kind of elements in that picture um i was on the beach but not on that day and it is all about that kind of like um the ritual of the moon and doing you know like a the phases of the moon and yeah. you know making our intentions and how much the moon um infiltrates our lives really and without us even realizing i think it's such a powerful and beautiful you know yeah. and moon bathing i got very interested in moon bathing <laughs> and why wouldn't you why not <laughs> i've recently been getting really into that as well um I'm aware that we're currently in a in the retro, Mercury's in retrograde. That's right, isn't it? So, yeah, just following, um, yeah, the cycles of of the planets and the moon and how that can have such an effect on your life. It's really interesting. So yeah, so that's that's those types of things. And then this one is um, this is another of the big prints. Some I kept small and some I um, made big. I also had these um, moons these these steel moons made for myself as part of um to in as a way of exhibiting so that they all kind of linked in it seemed important to keep that circle mm -hmm. and this is praise be praise be the yam or it's also called praise be hrt so it's called both of those names i kind of just call it both of them because i think they're both important because yeah. for a long when i went on hrt which i felt i had to to give myself a break mm -hmm. i um I felt like I was letting down the feminist kind of side of myself that I should be 
just sticking with it and powering through and being strong and not letting go of you know or not interfering with my natural hormones but um I really needed to have a break from the anxiety that I was getting and the non-sleeping and stuff so um I went on to HRT and then HRT patches are actually just yam so I was like aha so it's not so bad we're all right actually it's just yam (laughs) you don't have to eat a lot but you know um it seemed to be so yeah praise be and it's also you know playing as the moon and all of those kind of playing around with that kind of like uh what's that word you know like something is like something else they're similar (laughs) yeah you reference it it's like natural elements but bring it back to you your personal kind of transformation as well Mm -hmm. so so the three works that you're going to be showing in the virtual space as well or yeah i think so those three and then um this one i was this is um masked mudra so this is a womb mudra and so i've been doing a lot of yoga a lot of movement and a lot of um well some qigong more recently as well looking at how our bodies move and getting the energies flowing through your body and how you can you know certain um stances are about strength and moving forward so i kind of when i was in yoga i'd kind of absorb all of those and think yes yes right i'm gonna start working on that one and this is the womb mudra so really thinking about um just kind of playing around really yeah there and yeah somebody said to me they're like totems and this is uh moving forward and so this is um warrior two but um i've got my hands facing upwards and so that's really about power Mm -hmm. and no moving forward with uh strength i think it is or something like that anyway i loved it when i when i do it it helps me feel that i am actually doing something for myself and the apron's really quite um important as well I use collections of stuff that my mom hoarded. Okay. So when I collect, when we emptied my mom and dad's house and they were big hoarders, so now I'm hoarding their hoardings. And so, (laughs) as you do, and aprons were one of them, aprons and gloves, handkerchiefs, um, bags, shoes. (laughs) I haven't got all of the shoes, but yeah, I've kind of tried to work around with those as well. Things that that are here waiting for me that you know like passed on from uh, mother to daughter I think is quite important and so yeah these are but this is a a lovely apron that somebody bought me because they knew that I had a thing for aprons with my mom's aprons and it's I guess there's a conversation around domestic you know that domestic Mm -hmm. um environment and yeah all of the kind of feminist discourse yeah women cleaning, in working what is woman's work you know, how can a woman be strong yeah um, lots of things like that come into these pieces mm-hmm. oh thank you so much dad these are all my mom's hoarded gloves that she hoarded for me because <laughs> she knew i liked gloves so she kept them and then she'd buy really nice gloves all the time and so um i've really felt that they needed to come into this work and mm-hmm um there they are again and some little prints of various things i think that's it really for um the big pieces oh apart from this one here so this is um a coat i've reconstructed so it's one of my old coats and debbie dudar took it took it um took parts of it apart and remade it again so that it could be worn but when it was worn it would be more restrictive and look like something else and so it's a bird it is a bird coat and so when i do um these images here so I went to some woods nearby here some keel woods and um yeah. started doing a little bit of performance in the woods there with um one with my ears on that I've kind of developed for myself and then um mm-hmm. photo montaged one but yeah about using those coats and yeah just thinking about how you change mm-hmm. reconstruct transform other things from one thing to another yeah and how then wearing that actually in turn transforms yourself and mm-hmm. the really lovely cycle there well, that's really yeah. exciting so so you'll be showing a mix of those um yeah. photographs and um will you be planning on, on showing the coat in the exhibition or is that just a a separate piece alongside i'd like to show it mm-hmm. we'll see how we get on with photographing it and yeah. um, 
all of the technical stuff that yeah. comes with that you know like and the unknown those unknown bits there yeah, of course. Um, well i guess in, in turn you know showing these digitally you know transforms the reading of them and so yeah. you've got that really interesting um yeah connotations around the work um thank you so much for sharing that deb that's amazing um i guess the last thing i wanted to ask you was um what you'd say your biggest achievement has been during your masters i thought we'd end on a on a positive <laughs> yeah, the whole conversation has been positive <laughs> <laughs> i would say um oh it didn't take too much thinking about really it might have done if if you'd have asked me about a month ago but now on reflection um i went I went to uni to kind of be re-nourished and to remind myself of the artist that I am mm -hmm. and that has really helped and when and when we got our you know this last over this last month when we've, we've put our work in and got our results and mm -hmm. we haven't got the overall result yet but for that module I did feel that um I felt very a very very full of something and good and you know like that my self-belief and that I was re-nourished I have been re-nourished and that I can believe in myself again oh. as an artist and not I think I'd been drained and I was really tired and um, I feel alive again. And so that is really great. And then the con connections that I've made as well whilst there, I loved it. I didn't want to go anywhere where I knew, would know people. I wanted new and fresh and that is great. Uh, I really appreciate all of those and, you know, how we're moving forward mm -hmm. and how we're not, uh, we're not kind of just damned we are actually like searching and solution you know finding solutions for the difficult aspects and yeah. getting excited by the what are we supposed to do with this and let's um you know like let's really really um what well, i don't know be creative about our our problem solving Definitely. but yeah really love the love the way that um i have yeah, feel feel good. I feel good at the end of it, really. That um, it's been a success. Yeah, it sounds like it's been a really um, crucial, you know, developmental, um, you know, experience for you. And it, I can really, yeah, I can really hear that when you're talking about the work, how uh, how you reflect on that. Um, and it's yeah, I'm really excited to see what you do next, and to be able to share it with everyone. <laughs> um, yeah definitely so yeah as i say we'll be launching the um online exhibition on the 31st of march um and yeah in the meantime we'll be sharing the, i feel like you have so much really interesting research and um like visual resources to share so yeah we should definitely be sharing those in the lead up um oh, great yeah lovely yeah thank you so much for your time today deb it's been really really interesting and inspiring to hear how you work Oh, thank you very much. Thanks for having me. That's been really great.